Evening folks, uh, John here again. I hope you're all doing all right and you've had an okay week. Uh, so, let's crack into it. I'll let you know what I'm doing tonight. Uh, tonight, we're returning to pasta and uh, we're gonna cook ourselves a uh, nice simple dish. Uh, well, I hope it's simple, but for you guys, basically a nice simple pasta dish of spaghetti carbonara, carbonara, uh, that sort of nice, simple pasta sauce, which all it has in it is cheese and eggs. All right, cheese and eggs, uh, particularly Parmesan. Now, you can use Parmesan, you can use uh, Pecorino cheese as well. That's another option that you can use in this dish. So, we'll get cracking on with it. Uh, if you see me glancing around, I've just got a few notes that I'll be referring to and keep sending your questions through. Thanks so much for the questions you sent through in the week. It's been great to see them. Okay, and keep those going. So, with these carbonara, uh, which is so quick that it's almost a bit of a crime, really, how quick it, how quick it is in the time you boil the pasta. So, to start with, uh, I am actually going to make some croutons, all right? So, croutons, uh, are kind of like, if you don't know, they're uh, kind of crunchy bits of bread that have, you know, flavoured with olive oil and salt and pepper, and they're a nice accompaniment to soup, salads, uh, or pasta dishes, or, you know, whatever you fancy, really. So, it's a great way to use up stale bread. If you've got a bit of bread uh, that you, uh, you know, is not going to be used, it's got a bit hard, like this one, you know, it's got a bit tough, there's old boots, you want to use it up, then chuck it in the oven with some olive oil and some seasoning, and you've got yourself a nice little accompaniment to your dish, okay? So first things first, I'm gonna chop up this bread, season it, chuck it in the oven at 200 degrees, let's say. That's what I'm gonna chuck it in there at. It doesn't really matter too much, but you can basically have this in there while you're doing your pasta dish, okay? So I'm not cracking on with the pasta immediately. I mean, feel free if you want, which is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pour my water straight from the kettle uh, into my uh, saucepan and that is going to be for my uh, pasta. There we go. So obviously that's going to be coming in handy a bit later, very soon actually. So get yourself any knife, knife that's sharp enough, get your bread and just chop it up into little chunks really. There's no real method to it, make sure your bread doesn't have mould on it. If it has mould on the edges, just chop it off, you know. Don't waste, let the bread go to waste. So I just chopped this lump in half here, uh, but all I'm going to do with that lump is just chop it up into little chunks really. So just slice it. You don't want them too small, because otherwise they might burn. But even if they do burn, it doesn't really matter too much, because um, it's just nice and crunchy, and it just holds the flavour really, it doesn't really matter too much, in my experience. So they can be like an inch thick, or however you want them really. Kind of kind of like this, you know? That's what we're, we're, and I know this is boring to start with, you're chopping up bread, but trust me. This, again, the more stale it is, it's like a sponge, you know? It soaks up all that flavour, so it's what it's worth it, you know. Uh, definitely better than throwing your bread in the bin. Great way of reducing food waste, and again, it doesn't take too much time. All right. Again, the more you do this, the faster you'll get. It takes me a little while to chop this stuff up, to be honest with you, but that's just me. So. And let me know what you're up to, let me know what your week, as always, let me know what you've been cooking, what you've been baking, just what you've been doing with your week. Uh, if you've been vegging out or preparing for uh, the new academic year or the start of a, of a course, just let me, let me know. Always love to hear what you're up to. So basically, step one of this is basically just Step one of this, all it basically is, is where came from. There we are, it's okay. 
So, just chop up the bread, really. We do to begin with. Let me wave to you guys. Hello. I think you're alright. Lovely to have you with me. Feel free to drop in and out because I will be recapping what I do. Um, so if you kind of skip, you know, once this video is recorded, as it always is, it will be up on Instagram. But for the full widescreen experience, it will be on YouTube uh, because uh, we're on Zoom as well at the moment. So if you guys want to drop in and have a chat with me, uh, then I'm on Zoom. So the password is egg with a capital E and the Zoom link is in the description, okay? So if you want to be in on the action, uh, then right now, then uh, the Zoom is where it's happening. But if you want to stick your Instagram, we've got both going on tonight, as always. So, I'll show you my lovely bread that I've chopped up. There you go. So, hello guys. I've chopped up this bread, these are croutons. These are gonna go with the carbonara that I'm making. I've got myself a little ceramic tray here just because it's why I had to stay up ready in the first place. So I'm gonna reduce my washing up and just chuck it in there because I was using it anyway. A metal tray is usually best, really, but I'm just gonna throw caution to the wind and see what happens tonight, guys. So it might not turn out um, the greatest, but we'll see, really. Again, everything is an experiment. That's what I would always say. A bit of, um, well, I suppose just my, from my experience, if you're not cooked stuff before, don't worry. You know, if you're not, if you're not cooked any of this stuff before and you're a bit afraid to, to get stuck in, then don't worry, because um, just try things out, okay? And, you know, when you make this stuff, first time, second time, might not turn out how you expect, just keep, just keep trying with it, you know? And some things you can't really go wrong with. And this is one of those things really. It's just bread with olive oil, a little bit of olive oil, and uh, some salt and pepper, really. So, got my pepper, got oversized salt, salad. So, there's a few things you can use for this really. You can use um, an olive oil spray, uh, which just ensures a bit, bit of a quicker distribution. If you can't get one of those, just shake your olive oil over it. I like a spray, because it means I use a little bit less olive oil and I don't uh, have one bit of bread gobble up all my oil as well. So, some of them, if you can buy the ones that can be refilled, they're really handy. Because I'm just gonna refill this right now with some olive oil and then I can spray it around. There we go. So, by the way, I'm taking it slow at the moment, but once we get that carbonara going, it will be 10 minutes and it will be basically done. So that's why I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna um, be able to stop all the time. But uh, again, you can pause obviously recordings and if you're unsure of how I've done certain bits, just, just let me know. Yeah, spray that, like spraying a bit of sun cream. And maybe it's my strange mind, it makes you think of that. And then feel free, once you've done that, just get in there, you can add more oil if you really need, but it just allows it to crisp up a little bit. Right? So I'm going to slap that lid on there, lid on there, put that board back where it belongs, there you go, that's in the tray there. And a little bit of pepper. Depends on what you like, really, season to taste. And a little bit of salt. Now, if you're making dishes, like salads, like simple pasta dishes, any dish, um, and you, you know, you want to reduce your salt intake, then serve your dish with, you know, your reduced salt dish or something with so much salt in it, like a tomato sauce, like a, an egg-based parmesan sauce that we're doing here, and you serve these with it, 
And it's a way of getting a little bit of saltiness, a bit of salty snack, really. Um, so just take your hand in there. Don't be afraid of it. Just fondle the bits of bread. And, for example, I say this needs a smidgen more oil. So I'm going to give it that. Give it a bit of that. There we go. Do it. And just ensure they're as flat as you can make them, really. If your hands are clean, keep giving your hands clean. And by the way, uh, after the carbonara is done, um, I'm going to come back as well later on and I'll show you how to make a, a lovely dessert called lemon posse, which is a kind of creamy, uh, lemon flavoured cream uh, dish. Well, really, but it's a nice little uh, thing to eat with a spoon, really. So, there we go. There is our croutons. Chucking those in the oven at 200. 200. Top shelf, so that gets some gets some cooking. And again, take them out with you when you feel like it, five minutes or so. Um, but yeah, okay. So now it's pasta time. Carbonara time. If you're coming at this point and you see me uh, boiling stuff, so this is time for the pasta. So spaghetti carbonara, um, obviously there's loads of ways of making it. I haven't made this for a long time, so we'll see how it goes. I might fall flat on my face, it might not work out, it might be a cautionary tale, but the great thing about this dish is even if it goes, you know, wrong, or what people would call wrong, and doesn't look like the pictures, then it still tastes great. You know, you're not gonna poison yourself with carbonara, just to reassure you, trust me. I've messed it up before many times, and I do it many dishes, and um, when I try to, try to, you know, figure out how to do them, and they don't always work at AX best, but they still taste great. They're just a slightly different dish. Okay, so, you've got your water in there. I put in most of a kettle just because I didn't want to not have enough water. Drink your tea, that's an optional step. And, as I say, just to run through for this. So, or you basically want around 100 grams of, of um, spaghetti or any other uh, long pasta. It needs to be a long pasta, really, to toss in all that sauce. So any sort of spaghetti will do. Obviously, you might have expected, perhaps, watching this, that I'd be making spaghetti from scratch, but this is kitchen hats for students. This isn't kitchen hats for Michelin-style chefs or people with loads of time on their hands. Um, because making pasta is lovely, but you know, a lot of people don't like to say this, but the chef wouldn't admit it necessarily. But shop more pasta tastes really nice uh, when you cook it properly, you know, when you mix it with the nice sauces. So it's pasta and putting that flavour in the pasta. So, around 100 grams per person. I'm going to just be a little bit precise today. So, I'm going to measure out my spaghetti, okay? Hello to those just joining me. Get your carbonara from the menu tonight. So, let me have a look. Here we go. So I'm going to just measure out 400 grams because I thought, um, I'm cooking for the three people basically, but I'm going to make four portions because I think we'll be a bit hungry this evening. Um, but I'm going to just, let's see how much, shall we? So we've got a pack here, you see, um, and if I was just making for one person, it would be one egg around 20 grams of parmesan, um, and I would probably just grab myself, uh, depending really, maybe, I don't know, around this much pasta, perhaps, if you can see the scale here, or another pasta per person perhaps, but again, whatever floats your boat, guys. Uh, tonight, four portions around 400 grams is what we're doing, okay? 
and let me know if you completely disagree with how I'm doing this because um, I don't really know what I'm doing. So again, as with everything, uh, we muddle through, and that doesn't matter really, as long as you produce tasty food at the end of it. That's the main thing. So it's looking like this, as I suspected, is basically a whole pack of my pasta. Yeah, it is actually. Okay, so. Let's chuck that in there. So I'm going to put all this pasta in there. No wonder I need all that water. Apologies for that brief techno hitch. We're back on. Reminder, this is carbonara, spaghetti carbonara, with some croutons in the oven. They've been in the oven for around five minutes, maybe, maybe less. So I'm just cooking my pasta to go with it. And in a minute, I'm going to show you how to make the carbonara sauce, which is actually, it's so simple. Um, that I can't, like, I have to resist the urge to put more things in it. You know? I have to resist the urge to chuck half the spice rack in it. So, <laughs> obviously, that's a lot of pasta. It's 400 grams because I'm feeding three of us who are pretty hungry tonight. But again, around 100 grams of pasta will do for a single serve. Okay, that's a good portion. It's a filling portion of pasta. So once we've got this pasta going, I'm going to show you a uh, mint sauce, let's say. So obviously, the thing about spaghetti is, as you can kind of see, it can be a little bit awkward sometimes to get into your pan. But don't worry about it, because eventually you'll get there, and it will bend, and it will fit. And then it will curve around in on itself, like a sort of twisty wreath of spaghetti, dry pasta. Okay, there we go. So as you can probably see, you can hear it bubbling. And that will have around 10 minutes basically. Uh, yeah, 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is set myself a timer for 10 minutes. And then by the time that this is done, in fact, I'm going to put it on the back so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Make sure all the pasta is below the water if you can help it, guys. Feel free to put the lid in if you want. If you don't, again, don't worry about it. Okay. So, now it's time for us to make ourselves the sauce. So that kind of basically requires, uh, simply enough, well, how cheesy do you want it to be, really? That's the question. You make your sauce, basically, and oh yeah, here we go. It wouldn't be a carbonara, nearly forgot, without pancetta. Well, pancetta or guanciale, which is basically the proper uh, cut meat you put with it. But pancetta, you get it usually uh, near the pastas, near the sort of cold pastas, near the sort of Italian uh, cuisine in the supermarket. You might find it with the bacon, you might not, it depends. Or with ham, with cold meat, but anyway, pancetta, 
little cubes of pork meat, different from bacon. Now, you can use bacon if you want, but I'm trying to go for a little bit more uh, authentic, dare I say, and pancetta works really well. Okay, so you want to fry that until it's kind of crispy, that pancetta. So I'm going to turn my pan on now, and while it's frying, I'm going to make my sauce. Don't you worry. There we go. So, peel this. Again, feel free to get your little spray. And, or any oil, and just, just put a little bit of oil. Okay. I'll revert to the old fashioned method. There we go, that's a lot of oil. Oh well, that'll do it. So, I like using one of these. I just do, I just like it. Okay. I'm going to put that pancetta in there. There we go. I'll let them go to waste, guys. Mm. So if you don't want to use pancetta, guys, um, again, you don't need to use pancetta. It's a lovely creamy sauce. Without it, you just add a bit of saltiness. Obviously, lots of what you can add saltiness to a dish if you want that salty edge, but you um, can't consume meat or won't consume meat, or again, it's not part of your diet, then just feel free to add in, well, feel free to add in, uh, you can add capers, you can add, um, I mean, anything that's vaguely sort of salty, others would know better than me, uh, but halloumi, uh, you know, the Greek Cypriot sort of cheese, that would work really well. Just spitballing here. So I've got this pancetta on a kind of medium heat, I'm waiting for that pan to heat up. When it does, it's going to start spitting, it's going to start crisping up, okay? We'll just leave that. And now, I'm going to give the croutons a little peek. All right, guys? Oh, yes. So can you see that? They've kind of crisped up nicely. They're browning, but they're not. They are not burning. Not yet, at least. I'm sure I'll have to... Um, Neglect them for a bit longer for that to happen. But basically, hear that sizzling? Francesca's doing his thing. So now we want to go finally onto the sauce. Onto the sauce, you want four eggs. Okay, guys? Four eggs and basically around 100 grams, 80 to 100 grams of Parmesan. Um, so, Beat your eggs, four eggs, and again, however which way you want to do it, beat your eggs. So I am just going to do it right near my bin, so I reduce the mess I'm making, ever so slightly. There we go. I told you guys four, one per person, basically. Two, three, and then our fourth one. And you might 
think, oh, wait a second, that's loads of egg. Well, you'll see once it all goes in that it actually kind of soaks up quite nicely. Pass is coming along well. And if you're worried about cross contamination from the meat and the uh, pancetta, then use two spoons. Which I would recommend. Obviously, uh, you don't need to put as much oil as I did into that. I was a bit uh, overzealous. Get a little whisk, makes things easier. You, you can use a fork as well, you know? Really? That works as well. Just give it a a little shape of your wrist. Okay, and then you end up with this nice yellow yolky mixture. And then into that you want to grow it around 80 grams of palm down. 80 to 100 grams of palm I'm going to transfer that, guys, to the smaller ring. But there we go. So mixing the pancetta around a little bit. So now comes the parmesan, any hard cheese. You can use cheddar as well, guys. Um, you know, like it's not, people would never tell you I oh, use cheddar, but you can use cheddar. Cheddar will work fine. Any hard cheese. Just if you want to be more, you know, kind of traditional, then use parmesan. But again, anything will do, guys. Don't worry about it. Take it out. And get your scales and just grace it, guys. So, again, it's quite a lot of palms there. So, I'm going to use 80 grams today. Nice and simple. So that is the pasta basically done. I'm going to reduce the heat on that pasta. You can turn it off or you can turn it to the lowest heat. So ideally, uh, as I say, again, when you turn the pasta on, you just break the eggs, whisk them, well, put the pangesta on, and then eggs plus parmesan plus a bit of pepper, and you've got your sauce. And that's all, guys, really. Nice and simple. Takes me a bit longer, but don't worry. That me. There we go. I've chickened out around seventy six grams. So as you can see, I've used up quite a lot around half of my block there. Well, just under half of my block cheese. It's quite a bit of cheese. But as I say, you'll be realising why. You want your pancetta to be crispy, a little bit more. You'll be stirring that into your pasta very soon.
you want to see what the pasta tastes like. Do it now, see if it needs a little bit more time. If it does, give it a couple more minutes. Mm -hmm. Three or three. Pour a little bit of water. Turn it up a little bit. Give yeah, that needs a couple more minutes. Have a little bit of croutons again. Oh yeah. Mm. But now, those croutons are had around 12 minutes, a bit more like 15, and they are brown on the outside. Take a bit. Probably not familiar with it's not as hot as this. Mm. Oh, it's good. Mm. Salty. A little bit more, I think. Mm. Doesn't need it, but that's, that's what you want, really. Anyway. So, some pancetta, still doing its thing there. Basically, eggs, parmesan, black pepper. You know, you have the salt in this again because the salt in the parmesan and the pancetta. I like nice chunks, personally. Just a few. Shapes of that will do you well. A few brines, and how peppery you like it, really. I like it, peppery. There we go, that was good. So the trick is not scrambling your eggs. And obviously, scrambling the eggs happens when you overcook them, uh, when you overheat them. Our pasta's done, turn it off. And you do not want to drain your pasta at this stage, really. You don't want to lose all that water. In fact, you want a bit of water, you want a bit of moisture, but we're going to be putting that pasta in with a bit of water in our uh, pancetta and just shaking it around a bit, giving it a bit of a shake. So, we have our parmesan here, 75 grams, four eggs, four people by the way. And I'm going to, I'm going to give it a stir with a spoon. And what you'll notice, again as I say, is there's no cream in sight in this dish. Because the creaminess comes naturally from the egg and the cheese, no need for extra fat. So whilst cheese and eggs, obviously high in protein, high in fat in the cheese, but it's sort of, it's good to have a bit of cheese, good for calcium, strong bones. Cheese is part of a healthy, balanced diet, guys. So, it's sort of something like some awesome, some PE teacher or something now, anyway. Uh, no, I'm not trying to please your diet. But anyway. Long story short, this is better than uh, than cream-based dishes. It tastes better, in my opinion. My first taste of carbonara was a cream-based ready meal years ago. I'm not a fan of never really a fan of carbonara. When I tried it in a more traditional way, oh, wait, we're back. We're back. Okay, there we go. All right, so, the carbonara is brown and crisped up and all that stuff. Feel free to take that to the center. We've got our mix here. You don't want that to scramble, as I say. 
Even if it does though, it's okay. Don't worry. So there's that mix. Peppery. Yes. Don't worry about all the oil, that's going to be tasty. That fat from the bacon adds to that lovely flavour, guys. Pasta. Done. That didn't take long. So. Again, it takes you about half the time it did me. If you don't do it. When you're shutting away. Croutons. Perfect. There you go. Again, you want them brown. You want them to crisp up. Sale bread. Uses it up very nicely. So, you can keep that, I mean, on the low heat if you want. Whilst you're cooking, well, whilst you're adding your pasta. And then, if you so wish, you can drain a bit of that. As I will. But then, I'm going to just pick that up and put it in here. I'm going to use what you tend to show you. A spoon will do, really, but I'm actually going to use all these things. Got a, got a uh, like prongs, sort of, I'm not sure what you call it. So, just Basically, in there, gonna hit, gonna bubble. Don't let any of those lovely strands get away, guys. We leave a little bit of pasta water there in case. Use your spoon uh, and tongs or whatever, and just mix that pancetta, lovely pancetta, with your pasta. And I've got a nice big pan here because I've got a nice quantity of pasta. Turn your heat off, mix it around, coat it in that beautiful fat from your pancetta. Now, if you don't have pancetta, then, as I say, just add your sauce in now, basically. So what makes it a bit easier sometimes is if you um, have it in a tall pan because you can basically toss it around, okay? So I'm going to do that. Show you a couple of different ways. Doing it. This pan here, I'm going to use that. I'm going to see if I can get it in here. So again, guys, you wouldn't usually do this as messily as I would. I'm just doing this just, just to show you what it looks like. So. There we 
There we go. So, got your pancetta, all that mixed in. Again, feel free. Give it a stir around. See that, guys? There you go. And then turn the heat off for a sec. Let it cool slightly. Not too hot. Okay. Then that's a good time. Bring it around a little bit. I'll show you while you let it cool down a little bit, really. But if it's too hot, like I said, the eggs will scramble. It'll still take some of that. But it won't be exactly what we're looking for today. There we go. Clean pan. Clean spoon. So if you missed all that, you can see it all on YouTube. In a few days, it'll be uploaded. And also on our Instagram, at Chalk Over Life. There we go. That lovely mix. Um, hi guys. So we're just doing the last stage of the spaghetti carbonara. Got our croutons here. Got our mix. And I'll let that cool slight. And now, just pour that in there. Nice. Little stir. Whatever way you want to do it, really. So then you end up with basically a nice sort of creamy sauce with it, which coat all of that. Beautiful pasta. So, here we go. So as you can see there, it's nice and yellow from all that lovely egg. And it might not be much of a thing of beauty, but trust me, it'll taste good. Mm. Okay. So that is our carbonara done. Spaghetti carbonara. The lovely homemade croutons. Hello guys, just putting on some mood music. Here we go. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, again, back again, uh, as I promised, a little bit late, but I want to make sure that I have a nice clean kitchen space so I can show off what I'm doing, uh, show you guys what we're doing. So we had the carbonara earlier. Uh, that went pretty well, tasted pretty good actually. Um, you'll be glad to hear, I'm sure. And thanks so much for tuning in for that. But now we're going on for the dessert. And this is lovely, simple, and I mean really, really simple. It's three ingredients. Lemons, cream, and of course sugar. This isn't a health food. So it's a nice little indulgence, okay? You wonder where that cream went from the carbonara? It went into this dish. We didn't use the cream there, we're using the cream here, okay? So, first things first, I'll tell you the measurements we're working with. We're working with basically um, 133 grams of caster sugar. 
500 millilitres of cream, double cream, and two lemons, really. Uh, I've got one and a half, but as you can see, that is a whopper of a half, really. That's a big half. So I've got these here, and I'm going to make myself basically a sugar syrup and add it to some warm cream and then refrigerate the cream. So with this dish, all you do really is uh, heat up the cream nice and low, and then you add in the, um, as I say, add in the syrup and you refrigerate it for basically around at least kind of six hours really, which sounds like a long time really. It's one of those things you would usually maybe do in the morning first thing, get it over and done with quick, takes around 15 minutes so it's nice and short, and then you can uh, have it ready for dinner. Or in my case, uh, I'm making it now and I have it for breakfast. I won't really. That was just a joke. I won't really have it for breakfast. That'd be awful. But again, I won't judge you if you want to have that for breakfast. That's absolutely fine. But uh, I'm just anyway. Moving on. So, and there's no eggs in this. <laughs> it's unlike the carbonara. This isn't some eggy custard. It's a sort of lemony cream mousse sort of thing. Okay. So let me know again what you guys are up to. Things are happening on Zoom, things are happening on Instagram. At the moment, I'm on two screens right now. So, another tip, uh, we're just getting the bits ready here. So, you've got your ingredients here, and what you want to do is basically add the juice and the zest in there. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. I want to get a bit more juice out of these, so I'm going to microwave them for about kind of 30 seconds, I say. Yep. So what you can do if you want to just pierce the lemon somewhat somehow, and then put it in the microwave, guys. My microwave is behind this camera. Just putting it in there a very short time. And after that, I'm just basically going to make a little syrup. Alright? So for this, so it's very simple. All you need are two saucepans because you make the lemon syrup, make the cream. If you've got a big saucepan, you can use it. Obviously, it will take longer to do, longer to, uh, to heat up. It's a large saucepan, but it will retain the heat well. Um, so if you've got these small pans again. Just a tip: you've got these small pans. Um, obviously they can have a tendency to fall over a bit. So if you keep um, it in line with the corner of the, um, any sort of diagonal against the corner, towards the corner of um, you know, each section, each square of the hop, just prevents it from falling over too much. They may fall over at times. Uh, again, just keep an eye on it really. And you'll be okay. There we go. So, let's crack on. Get our lemons. Give it a little look. Put them for a little bit more. Another 20 seconds. And you can serve these in little ramekins if you have them. Serve them in a mug if you want, because we're going to refrigerate them. So, I've got these little plastic, plastic melamine bowls I've got from the supermarket. Uh, they're quite small, and they're like the size of a, of a, of a cupcake, I'd say. Uh, but they're enough, the little spoon, they're enough for one portion, really. I've also got to show you a couple of different methods shot glass. So that just another another way of serving your lemon sausage. And the beauty of this dish is that it's flavoured cream. 
you can flavour that cream with anything you pretty much want. And that can be lemons, that can be oranges, that can be limes, that can be uh, grapefruit, posset. I mean, that would be delicious. Passion fruit. Apple, perhaps, but those sort of, um, sort of fruits that you can juice, you can squeeze the juice out if you want, really. So I chuck those lemons in for around 40 seconds in the microwave, and that just gives it a little more juice. You can ignore this step completely if you so wish. It's not a requirement at all. So I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put it in my, um, so I've got that there, actually, let's, let's rearrange this a little bit. So I've got, I don't want to put it on too large a gas ring because otherwise it will overheat, basically. So you want to put your lemons uh, juice in one pan. I'm going to put it on a flat surface, just to be safe. You don't need a lemon juicer, all you need is a fork. Okay? So grab that and just push that in there and squeeze it out. And again, because I've heated it up, it will all go in there and just the juice will release so much easily, so much more um, easier than it would otherwise, guys. So, Give it a little squeeze, don't be afraid. Also another great thing, it cleans your hands very well. Mm. You can wash your hands in the But it fragrances your hands with a lovely lemon scent. So, there you go. So give it a proper squeeze. If you can't get fresh lemons, you can use uh, lemon juice in a bottle. But if you're going to make a dessert, I mean, you kind of want it. You can, uh, lemons are a little luxury, I think. They're expensive sometimes, but get some big, look out for some big ones and you get better value for money. Um, sometimes if you're lucky, if you go to supermarkets in the evening, they can kind of discount the lemons, you know, not them down. So that's what I look for. I'll pop the shops. Those lovely, Yellow stickers. Pick your lemon. Cut it in half with a little sharp knife. These little sharp knives are really handy, little sharp steak knife. But um yeah, there we go. So again, squeeze that fork in there and just put that fork in there and just squeeze it against it. And that makes sure and then you can turn it around a little bit again. I wish I could show you a close up of this, it's a bit awkward with the camera set up. But just to show you, so you've got the lemon, fork in, in, and then squeeze, squeeze, or pinch it. You can use more of your fingers if you need a bit more force, which is what I need now. There we go. This releases a lot of lemon juice. In fact, the recipes that I kind of drew from for this probably don't even require as much lemon juice. But I like it lemony. I don't know about you, but I like a punch of lemon. So, I'm just going to gently heat this. Um, in fact, I'm going to go as far as to remove the seeds, because here, we are professional. We're not going to have seeds in our possets. Bees in our bonnets. Frogs in our throats. Flies in our rhythm. Anyway, so lemon juice, you've got that on your pan there. Make sure it's balanced enough. Turn that heat on. So this has taken ages, obviously, because I've just been uh, sauntering around slowly. So you can obviously add the zest if you so wish. So the thing is with this is it can be quite hard sometimes to kind of zest the lemon. So I don't usually add the zest. 
Thì bạn còn chỉ nó chứ Và if you want to Then obviously by all means Do so Let me just show you what zesting a lemon is like Just get any kind of grater and just, just give it a little scrape really so I'm going to put teeny weeny bit of this in there. A little while sometimes and the zest but trust me um, it's quite nice if you like that if you just want bits of simple just have the lemon and heat it up but yeah start off on a low heat if you want there we go so I'm adding a teeny bit mainly because I don't have the patience to do it for ages So, there we go. So, that'll do. Keeping those hands clean. Definitely a message I'll always send off. So, you've got that lemon juice, just. Let's get one of these spoons that I was using earlier, shall we? Hi, Rosa. Um, so we're heating lemon there, and we're doing heating up some cream now. Okay. So that's two lemons, basically, um, on a on a medium heat. Let's turn it up a little bit, shall we? On a medium heat, and we're making our nice lemon posset, our nice lemony cream. So there, in the corner of the screen, or maybe it's slightly below is that lemon juice. So you want to um, now add kind of around 133 if you want to be precise. So it's an American cup which I used to inspire, well, the recipe was inspired by an American recipe, so it uses a cup of sugar. So the cup is like 133 grams, basically. Uh, using the magic of the internet, it wasn't in my brain, I didn't. Uh, just calculate it like Sherlock Holmes. But um, let's get our scales back. And actually, what I can do, always a good thing to do sometimes, is use a measuring jug. If you fancy, I mean, I'm going to use it a bit anyway. There we go. So, 133 grams. You always make a simple sugar syrup, basically, with this. Yeah, that will do. There we go. It's at this point, you can add other flavours if you so wish. Okay, if you fancy spice on top of it. As you know, I love a bit of spice. So, I'm going to add a teeny bit of turmeric because I love turmeric. Um, and you know what else goes well with lemon? Ginger. So, add a little speck of ginger if you fancy. Don't worry about it otherwise, but I'm doing that because I like mixing things up a little bit. So, Get that little mix and then add your sugar to your water. Okay? Hi there on Zoom. See, you've got a new one joining us. Hello. So add your sugar, 133 grams, to your lemon juice. And there, 
you get yourself a simple sugar syrup. Get your hands clean. There we go. So, let me check that I'm going all right. Perfect. So, as you may be able to see here, you mix in that sugar and you want to bring it to the boil, and that sugar will just dissolve in there, really. And this sugar syrup would be beautiful in coffees, really. Um, coffees on ice cream or anything. It's just a lovely... Okay, a lovely um, flavour. Alright, anyway, cream. And next. Now, when I'm done in a bit, I'll also be around to you can see fire your questions my way about uh, any cooking, any baking, life in general, student life, London, King's College, any of that jazz. And I'll do my best to answer them. But, yeah, feel free to just be along for the ride if you fancy, really. Yeah, so. Keep that that sugary lemon juice on the, on the kind of medium heat on a small flame if possible. We don't want to completely incinerate or evaporate any of that. Second pan. Now I know two, two pounds is a bit of a pain, I know, but it's worth it. You need that really. So now we want ourselves 500 millilitres of double cream, double cream. Right. Five hundred mil. Which is near about near about your entire um, tub of cream. That last bit you can use for some cheeky strawberries if you want, cheeky strawberry topping or fruit. So once your sugar syrup boils, it hisses, then you turn off the heat, okay? And basically leave it to one side, okay? and then pour the cream in your pan and put it on a nice low heat, okay? So I'm gonna do this in one swoop, one single motion. If you feel you haven't quite gotten enough cream out of that, like me, look at all that, that's quite a lot of cream that's escaped. I'm gonna get myself boom in there. But uh, think of this as a reward for you cooking it, for you making it. You can lick that later if you so wish. Free country. Now cream on a nice, oh, not that one, on a nice low heat. You don't want it on too high a heat, otherwise um, if you heat cream too high like any dairy product it will spoil, it will split, it will be a bit horrible, it will turn into curds and whey, which we don't want. And it is worth using a second spoon if you're really committed to separating the two ingredients. Um, so this will take a little while, because obviously we've got cold cream that's going in a pan um, at that stage. But feel free to spend that time doing something productive like a workout, a dance move, read some poetry, consider the meaning of life, uh, you know, find your family, talk to your friends. So, that cream's doing its thing, and our lovely syrup is just sitting there. It's obviously quite thin, as you'd imagine, 
because it's going to mix with the cream it's going to, and that's going to thicken it. That's going to help it solidify. Because obviously if you just put cream in the fridge, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily solidify. It kind of becomes thicker, obviously, but it won't solidify in something you can eat with a spoon. Whereas once you add that syrup, it gives it that ability to crystallise, to solidify. Um, so, obviously also a common ingredient in uh, ice cream as well. When typically a lot of people have flavoured syrups, sugar syrup, and that's a way of getting that sugar and getting that uh, sweetness throughout. Because if we poured, if we poured um, powdered sugar directly into this, it wouldn't quite work the same way. You'd end up with a custard rather than a sort of um, flavoured cream. It wouldn't work out the same way, it would change the texture. But you want to keep that really low. Okay. I keep stirring it, keep checking it, and once it comes to the boil, once you see heat rising off it, you can then um, whisk in, then you pour in your syrup. A whisk is good because you can really mix it really fast without splashing it as much. That's why I recommend the whisk because it kind of cuts through. Having at least one whisk in your kitchen is very handy. I know it might seem like a fact, but you can use a fork to whisk eggs, but you can't um, mix things the same way using a fork or a spoon. As I say, whisk has that lightness to it. And it's fun just to do this with it. And it's just a stereotypical kind of chef um, utensil, really. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking about it too much. But I, I just like it. I don't know. Let me know. A whisk's pointless. What do you think? How would you do this? How would you do it better? What um, flavourings would you add to your... Uh, posset. Does anybody know why it's called a posset? I haven't done that research. I'm not sure. I'd be interested to know. Now, the beautiful thing about this um, is when you've, of course, heated, you heat the cream, you've heated the syrup, and you get this beautiful lemony aroma that just permeates the room and fragrances the room. It's lovely. Uh, it's great. And uh, when you microwave lemons, like I did earlier, to get the juice out of them, I really like that. Uh, why to what? Um, what's the question there? Uh, uh, Soy, what's the uh, question you're asking why to? Sorry, there's a slight delay on here, so I'm not sure what you're referring to. Uh, that's the thing. But, um, yeah, so, again, I'm not sure what posit, what posit means, what, yeah, what the meaning of that is. But... Syrup um, and cream. Let's say, whilst I'm kind of generally sort of waiting for stuff, feel free to pop down below, uh, type your questions. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's the question, isn't it? Why is it a posset? Um, the English language is a weird thing. Um, let me look that up, actually. I should have done this earlier, shouldn't I? Um, I'm intrigued. I mean, I've got the time now because I'm just letting it letting it uh, chill and do its thing. So, okay, interesting. So apparently, hmm. So posset, apparently, here we go, I've searched this up. Apparently posset derives from the Welsh term um, Possel, P-O-S-E-L, which um, means in Welsh, messenger, apparently. So somehow, it seems, that term may have kind of transmutated into posset, P-O-S-S-E-T. So posset, funnily enough, looking it up, according to um, Webster's Dictionary, Oxford Dictionary as well, um, it has two meanings. It's a beverage of hot milk that's been curdled by sort of some sort of infusion or syrup. But we've got a second definition here, which makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> apparently, a posset can also mean a baby's vomit. 
comprising curdled milk? Apparently. Um, as in, Derek saw that a smear of posset had appeared on the left shoulder of his jacket. I've been puked on, he said. So there we go, that's a bit of education. I didn't know that. So if you're writing a story, a short story, or well, someone's been sick on you and you want to describe it in a bit more of a sophisticated way, you can say there's some posset on you. People will look at you weirdly, but it is an established term and there's record uh, even as late as 2014 of people using it in literature. So I don't know. Uh, anyway, I just thought that was, was weird. That's unusual, really. So I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit on this cream so it just heats up a bit more. Dip your finger in it. Mm. Mm. Now, the taste of, of cream. Um, oh my gosh, I love it. I do love it. It's a bit so bad. I can't remember the last time I've actually bought cream. I think it's just this recipe. Because um, this is another one of the recipes. So um, I thought I'd show it to you guys because my family made it. Um, for me for my birthday, they made a kind of little sort of home afternoon tea kind of thing with lovely sa a few sandwiches and, and um, uh, sort of stay at home afternoon tea, which would be lovely. Sandwiches and a couple of little desserts and scones. And they made this lemon posset with the syrup and the cream. So effectively, if it wasn't for them, you know, um, I wouldn't be making this today for you guys. So thank you, mum and dad, for, uh, for doing this and inspiring me as you do in life. But yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing today, as I say. But I thought I'd spice it up and add turmeric and ginger. So I'm learning this with you guys, basically. So I'm just taking it slow and chilling with my music. I Personally, I kind of find sometimes, as I say that, I don't know about you guys, but taking the time to do a little bit of cooking in the evening, a bit of baking or anything, it can be quite therapeutic particularly when you have music on or the windows open or just the sounds of the night. Um, I mean, obviously, if it's the sounds of, of, of rowdy flatmates or family, then it's not quite the same, I suppose, but um, fortunately, it's not too rowdy tonight around here. Let's have a look at that again, shall we? Oh, yes, that's warmer. Definitely warmer. Hmm. Okay. By the way, guys, again, let me know what have you been consuming tonight? What have you been dining on? You know, what was on the menu? So I had the carbonara earlier, as I say, and it, it, was, it was definitely edible, it was good. But um, I must say, personally, nothing beats a lovely tomato sauce for me. I love the flavour of a rich tomato pasta. Um, because it has that rich flavour, you know, imbued in it properly, just a proper meal, solid, fills you up. But, um, again, carbonara is so quick that I can understand, like, I would recommend it if you're in a pinch and you want some pasta, but you just don't want, um, you don't want to go through all the steps of simmering a sauce. So, something that's actually, a little tip actually, I can't remember I mentioned it before, but something that is even quicker than carbonara is called pasta in bianco, um, as in, you know, white pasta, basically, uh, in Italian. And that dish is, you cook your pasta, yeah, for around 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes, depending on instructions on the packet, basically, or how, how, how dente you like it. Cook your pasta, turn the heat off. And then, all you do really is just, um, Heat a bit of butter up if you wanted the more traditional Italian way, or some olive oil, or a little bit of both, and mix it in with your pasta. You know, toss it around with a bit of butter, a bit of olive oil, and a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. And that, that fat, a little bit of fat, does just coat your pasta really lovely. So that's a nice, simple method, basically. Butter and pasta, basically mixed together, a uh, teeny block of butter. And that is a nice, simple pasta dish if you just don't want to eat plain pasta, okay? Uh, oh, hi, Radha. Hi. Hope you're doing all right. So, yeah. 
basically just in the interim period here of um, waiting for my cream to heat up and my uh, syrup is here just doing its thing and it's like open for questions at this point. Beautiful thing about this is because I've added turmeric to it, it gives it that lovely sort of fluorescent uh, kind of almost neon kind of yellowy greeny colour. So yeah that cream just keep stirring it. Feel free to give it a little test with your finger. Again we don't want it to spoil, we don't want it to split. So you can feel that cream is hot at this point. But, um, Keep his hands clean. Don't need these scales anymore. Why do I even have them with me? I don't know. And some stuff up as well. A bit, bit messy here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because I can't stop moving things around. In fact, I'm going to be a bit cheeky and have a spoonful of this. Hmm. All right, that's enough. Put that in my sink. I don't even need this board anymore. There we go. Leave that there, that there. Move this over here. Give my worktop a little wipe. There we go. Hi Naomi. Hello. Okay. Let me move this more into view, shall I? Oh, I fell down there. That's the wind, guys. So the cream, the thing about when you heat cream up, it doesn't really change visually that much. So as you could may be able to see here, obviously it's the colour, uh, but it doesn't, it, it just becomes warm. You know, you can see the steam coming off it. And again, always feel free to just dip your finger in there. And as long as it's a clean finger, as long as you see how it's hands washed in between. Uh, and obviously, I would say this is kind of more of a, uh, it's a, it can be a quick thing, but obviously as you can see with me, I'm just um, plodding along like a, like a tortoise, you know, um, this evening. So just taking it nice and slow. So don't take this as, as kind of indicative of how you would make it. You guys would be faster than I would. For me, this is just an opportunity to chill and unwind a little bit and just show you how to do this. So, let's try that syrup, shall we? Also, oh my gosh, ooh. also, let me know if we have any offer holders, any prospective students among you guys, uh, what you're up to, what you're studying, what, what are your plans, you know, or what, well, or what's, what's coming up for you? Let me know what you'll be up to in September. What does the future hold for you? I mean, we can't truly know what the future holds for us. I mean, I don't, nobody knows. But what do you hope the future will hold for you? Uh, we don't need to go that deep, obviously, if you don't want to, but, oh my gosh, yes. This syrup is already thickening up as it just starts to chill a little bit. And it has that just lovely silky flavor to it, which is just so delicious. Yeah, I can see that steam rising off that that cream there. So as I like to joke, this is the part in the recording where you would usually keep pressing the forward key and you'd be fast forwarding through and like, you know, and there'd be, I'd be suddenly at the end, that's what you would do with this. Um, so, don't worry, you can skip all this blabbering um, if you want the actual recipe. And I will be posting the recipe up on the Instagram story of that King's Ready Life afterwards. Um, so if you just want the nitty gritty, then I'll give it to you, okay? And to recap, 500 milliliters of cream, double cream, 133 grams of caster sugar, and the juice of two lemons. And you basically heat up, uh, simmer uh, your lemon juice, 
add your 133 uh, grams of sugar, stir it, let it dissolve, you've got a syrup. Once it's heated up, turn it off, leave it to the side. Heat up your cream on a kind of low to medium heat. Don't let it be bubbling because then it will um, start to split and be all sour and hot. And then to that cream, once it's heated up enough at 500 milliliters, you add, with a whisk preferably, your syrup. Right, and if I'm losing you guys, just say, um, no offense if you disappear. So, let's try that cream again. Oh yeah, it's quite hot. So the heat, again, just allows everything to mix together. And it has to be double cream. Otherwise you don't get the same thickness that you really want. I think it's about time now for us to do what you've been waiting here for and mixing it away, mixing it um, together. All right. So again, a piece de resistance. Just basically pour your beautiful syrup into your cream. Here we go, guys. Whisk it. Just whisk it. Don't waste a drop if you can help it. There we go, that's what happens when you don't position it properly, guys. That syrup just thickens it nicely. Yes, yes again, I don't want to waste any of this stuff. It's too good. There we go. Now, put a bit of water in there. Lick the spoon, like the maverick you are. And just whisk up. Let me show you. There we go. So, as you can kind of see, obviously it's the lighting too, but it is a bit more yellow. The turmeric didn't have much effect on it because this is mainly cream. Uh, so, from here on, what you can do is uh, you can strain it if you want it to be smoother and a bit of a, of a softer flavour. Or, you can just pour it straight in to your little bowls or your shot glasses. If you want lots of small possets, use the shot glasses. If you want slightly bigger ones, use these little pots if you can get them, ramekins, anything. Anything will do. Pour it into a cup and just eat it like a crazy person. Uh, like me, if you want to. Uh, but what you want to do, really, is chill it in the refrigerator for at least six hours. Really? So, let it cool slightly and then pour it into the, into the rubber things. I'm probably going to use a ladle for this. But, you can use a spoon, anything will do really. 
So if you don't mind playing it. Okay, there we go. So, uh, yeah, let's just use, what shall I use? Let's use a slightly oversized spoon for this. Anything. <laughs> Anything, really. Uh, no, actually. I'll use a smaller spoon. One that's absurdly long, like this. And this is going to make maximum mess, so let's use that. All right. So... At this point... Feel free just to try a bit of it, because you deserve it. You deserve trying a bit of this, because you've made it, you've worked for it. Mm. That's so good. Sort of dish, sort of dessert, you can just eat warm, and it'd be a lovely sort of warming dessert. But that's not what we're doing here. We want them a bit more solid, okay? So, you can keep the little spoons in, you can take them to one side, whatever you fancy, really. But I'm gonna take the spoons out. So let's see, shall we? Let's move this. And, there we go. Hope that you can see this. I know it's not the closest, but um, so I'm just going to spoon it really. Just I'd like to see how much goes in each one. You can just pour it, obviously that's easier, that's quicker, but I'm just going to see how many spoonfuls can go into each one. So at this point you can also um, add fruit on top of it if you wish, a bit of fruit, a bit of, bit of a topping, a bit of lemon zest extra if you want, but it is a beautifully simple sort of dessert. And I'm gonna put some in these shot glasses too. Actually, let's pour it. Give it up on it. One, two, and yeah, let's pour it. There we go. Delicious. You want to make a bit of mess on the sides, don't worry about it. Just clean the half for yourself. Oh yes. A bit on even. It's even a little bit. How much goes in there? Let's see. There we go. That's one. And then how much goes in there? Let's see, shall we? Pretty good. Made a bit of a mess there, but it's been a long night. I'm going to scrape out all these little bits and bobs that's left. Don't waste any of that good stuff. Here we go. 
I've dripped a bit everywhere, but oh, here we go, I'm back again. Uh, I think that was a little picture on there. So there we go. Took a while because I was taking it very slow. But here is the lemon possets that we've been working on this evening. We've got four big ones here and four little shot glasses for a bit of a wild night because it gets no wilder than a night full of lemon infused cream, as we know. All right, got a little bit of residue left here. Give it a taste. <laughs> yes, I mean, um, uh, GS Ursoy says um, that I should film a reaction video tasting the cooled down version of it. I suppose I could do that. Um, if that's what you guys want, I can do that. Um, if you think it would have any sort of value, then uh, your wish is my command in, 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 in uh, living reason. But yeah, I will. I'll be chilling these this evening, and in the morning, when I can, I'll film a little clip uh, of what they look like. Uh, a hint, they won't look much different, really. And then I'll film a little clip of digging the teeny weeny spoons into it, just to show you what it's like. So at the moment, it has this predictably uh, kind of drippy consistency, as you'd expect. They're not particularly appetizing, I must say. But you taste it. Mm, so good. So these will go in the fridge and chill for at least seven hours, right? And then the tasting can begin. So I'm going to clean up now, and I will wish you a wonderful evening, wherever you are in the world, or a morning, or an afternoon, or a midday, and thank you so much for, for tuning in tonight and watching the, the chaos. I've been a bit frazzled, it's been a bit of a long week, as I said, um, so sorry if I went through things too fast and, and stuff, as I said, the recipes will be available, um, and I hope that, you know, this provided some mild modicum of enjoyment. Uh, it's so wonderful as always to hear what you've been up to and, and uh, see you guys. So thank you. Um, and I hope everything is going well for you in your lives. Okay. Um, and yeah, just keep, keep the, keep the communication coming and keep those suggestions coming, you know, because I've got a plan out for the last, uh, Few, for, for the rest of the weeks of August. So at the end of August, I'll be saying goodbye to you guys um, and the three of us, some are actually passing over to the wonderful uh, next generation, the wonderful team, um, who I can't be privy to announce at this point, but if you're watching, then you know who you are, of course. Um, and those guys will be providing fantastic events for you very soon. Um, I'm sure at uh, least even better building upon the stuff that you've been seeing so far. So anyway, that aside, I'm going to put these in the fridge. I'm going to let them chill. I'm going to go and chill. You're going to go and chill. We're all going to just chill. You deserve to just chill yourself, okay? In the figurative sense, don't hide in the freezer. Unless you fancy it. Ah, it's warm in here, so I definitely need um, to cool myself down, okay? And if you want to continue the conversation uh, about literally anything, or um, again, student stuff, cooking stuff, baking stuff, so don't hesitate, send me a message, okay? I'm on Facebook, unfortunately. Um, John CF, uh, I'm also, to say, access me through the, uh, message me through the King at King's Real Life. Uh, as I say, send me a message. If you want to continue chatting, ever have any questions, don't hesitate, okay? I love, I love to connect and chat with you guys. It's such a pleasure and an honor to do this for you, okay? So, uh, to those still around, to those not, have a wonderful evening, and this is me signing off, and thanks so much, okay? You're the best. Bye-bye, okay. until next time, all right? Bye.
Bye bye, guys. Okay, thanks for watching and have um, a wonderful day, a wonderful week. All right, and until next time. Bye bye.